I am Dr. Venkatesh, I am a consultant neonatologist. Today, let us learn echo evidences of patent ductus arteriosus. We all know that patent ductus arteriosus is one of the important cardiac morbidities we see in patent neonates. Before considering the management of patent ductus arteriosus, it is always better to rule out structural heart disease which require the cardiac evaluation, that is the complete cardiac evaluation. Let us demonstrate how the PDA is picked up on echocardiography. There are different views are used to demonstrate the patent ductus arteriosus. The commonest view that is used is the short axis, the parasternal short axis view, as you can see. The probe is placed in the second intercostal space parallel to the sternum with a marker facing to the left shoulder joint. Can you see this marker? And to get the image, and also you can use ductal view where you can keep the marker sagittally to demonstrate parasternal sagittally to demonstrate the ductus is called ductal view. In situations where you cannot do short axis view, you can also demonstrate, you can also use the subcostal view to demonstrate. This is what subcostal view. Now I'll demonstrate ductus arteriosus using parasternal short axis. See so the probe is placed here. See the images. The probe is placed. You see that? This is called as parasternal short axis. To get parasternal short axis, you get this is the parasternal long axis. Just rotate 90 degrees with the marker facing to the left shoulder joint. You get this view. If you look at this view. This is a parasternal short axis view. This is also called as great vessel view, where you can see the root of aorta, pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery, which is adjacent to root of aorta, left pulmonary artery here, and this is your ductus arteriosus, and this is your descending aorta. This is on two, that is on the gray scale, two D echo on gray scale. Same thing if I put color, color Doppler, you can see the blue right pulmonary artery and this is the left pulmonary artery and what you see here, you can see that turbulence and this is the ductus arteriosus. This gives the impression of three leg chair, one leg, two leg and three leg chair appearance is characteristic of ductus arteriosus. After knowing the patency of ductus arteriosus, the second important thing to understand is how to determine the size of ductus arteriosus. This is a moving image you can see. I will freeze it. I will close it. Now, after freezing, so you can see this. Yeah. This is again the right pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery and this is the ductus. I will use the caliper here. You can see the caliper here. Yeah, I just press the caliper. See, at the pulmonary end, I will measure the ductus arteriosus and the measurement is 0.258 centimeter or it is 2.5 millimeter. Ductus can also be measured using the color Doppler. The measurement of color Doppler is made only if the ductus is very small. If we use for big ductus the color Doppler, it will overestimate the size of the ductus arteriosus. Depending upon the size of the ductus, it is classified as mild, moderate, severe. 
and to signify more than 1.5 millimeter is considered as significant uh, PDA. Depending on the size of the uh, uh, ductus, the magnitude of ductus or the significance also will increase. After knowing the patency, the size of the ductus arteriosus, we should demonstrate what is the direction of flow. To determine the direction of flow, the Doppler is kept over the ductus arteriosus, you can see here. To get the wave pattern, this is the line, this is the line. If we get wave on either side of this, it is called bidirectional shift. If you see the wave only above this base line, it is left to right shunt. And if you get only the waves below this line, this is called right to left shunt. If you see here, in this case, it is bidirection shunt, more of left to right. Suppose if I measure, if I measure, if I measure this part using the caliper, see, this is the distance here. And also if you measure from here, caliper from here to here, you see this wave is lesser in distance than this wave, correct? This is, but it is a bad direction shift. And again, we classify whether it is a non-destructive PDA or restrictive PDA. What is restrictive PDA? If you look at, this is again, I will just uh, this, I will take this caliper and this is your systolic and I will take another caliper and this is your diastolic low. If you see the diastolic flow, more than 50% of the systolic, this is the systolic flow, systolic flow of ductus and the diastolic flow of ductus. This diastolic flow ductus, if it is more than 50% of the systolic flow, then it will become a restrictive PDA. What is non-restrictive PDA? Suppose the wave, if you see the systolic wave and the diastolic wave, the flow is too less. Diastolic, when diastolic flow is too less compared to the systolic flow, or if it is less than 50% of the systolic flow, this diastolic flow, then it is called as non restrictive PDA. After determining the presence of ductus, it is always important to know the immoral significance of the ductus arteriosus. One of the parameters used in signifying patent ductus arteriosus is LAO ratio, that is left atrium and aortic ratio. To demonstrate left atrium and aortic ratio, keep the probe, see this is known, parastone, this parastone long axis is taken there. The probe is kept in the second or third intercostal space with the marker facing to the right shoulder joint to have what is called as parastonal long axis. Now, you take the cursor you cut, you use the M mode, cut the left atrium at the level of aortic valve. This is the left atrium, this is the aortic valve, cut at uh, aortic valve to get what is called as to, uh, moving mode or M mode of echocardiography. What you see here, this is the left atrial diameter, this is the aortic diameter. If you take the, if usually the left atrium diameter and aortic diameter are most same. If this left atrium diameter is more than 1.5 times the aortic diameter, then it will become significant. In this case, as you see, the left atrium to aortic ratio is 3.06. This is used as one of the parameters in the, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in defining the yeah. Another important factor para or parameter used in defining hemodynamically significant PDA is E by A ratio. 
This is important function of the left ventricle. Usually the E by A is less than 1 in neonates. The E component is the early diastolic flow from left atrium to the left ventricle which depends on the gravity. The second component is the A component. What you see is the E component. This is the A component. The A component is the last portion of the filling of left ventricle because of atrial contraction. Usually this E will be lesser than the A because in neonates the diastolic function is not well developed. That's why the E by A will be on the lower side. If the E by A is more than 1.1 or 1.2, it signifies the hemodynamic significant ductus arteriosus. In this case, if you see, the E by A is 1.35. How to derive this? It's very easy to demonstrate E by A. The probe is kept in the apical area with a marker facing periphery to get four chamber view. So this is the four chamber view I got. And the pulse wave Doppler is kept at the mitral level to get this view. To define the impact of ductus arteriosus on the systemic perfusion, we use the descending aorta where you can get descending aorta in the subcostal view. The probe is kept in the subcostal view with a marker facing up to have subcostal sagittal view where you can easily see the aorta and this is descending aorta. You can keep pulse wave Doppler in the descending aorta to get the wave. Usually the flow pattern in normal condition it is called anti-grade flow. Can you see that? The systolic flow and this is the diastolic. This is anti-grade. But in situations where the ductus arteriosus is significant and where it is coming the way of systemic hyperperfusion, you will find the systolic flow and diastolic flow reverses. This reversal of diastolic flow is another is very important parameters in determining the hemodynamic significant PDA.